brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is the leader of the Sunni militant jihadist organization known as the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, which controls territory in several countries. The group has been designated a terrorist organization by the United Nations, as well as by the European Union and many individual states. In June 2014 he was elected by the Majlis al-Shura, representing the Ahl al hul wal of the Islamic State, to be their caliph, which he claims to be. On October 4, 2011, the U.S. State Department added al-Baghdadi to the specially designated nationals list, and announced a reward of up to $10 million for information or intelligence leading to his capture or death. On December 16, 2016, the U.S. increased the reward to $25 million equal to the reward being offered for the leader of al-Qaeda, Yemen al-Zawahiri. Authorities within the United States have also accused al-Baghdadi of kidnapping, enslaving, and repeatedly raping an American citizen, Kayla Mueller, who was later killed over time. There have been a number of reports of al-Baghdadi's death or injury, however, none have been verified. Names Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is the nom de guerre of an individual who has had various names and epithets attributed to him, including Abu Duha al-Shabar and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi al-Husseini al-Hashimi al-Qarashi. He is known to his supporters as Amir al-Mu'minin, Caliph Abu Bakr, Caliph al-Baghdadi, or Caliph Ibrahim. This is besides his previous epithet, which was Sheikh Baghdadi, the alias used by al-Badri include the names Abu Duaa and Dr. Ibrahim Awad Ibrahim Ali al-Badri al-Samerai. A reporter of the Washington Times states the so-called real name of al-Badri is Ibrahim al-Samerai. The word Duaa signifies in the English language supplications, invocations, or prayers, in regions under ISIL control. Various non-Islamic honorifics that recognize his rank may be used as a formal address recognizing him as a noble and a head of state that might proceed to follow his name. Abu Bakr Having at some time taken the name Abu Bakr, al-Baghdadi is thought to have adopted the name of the first caliph, Abu Bakr, during the times when Abu al Kashim Muhammad ibn Abdallah ibn Abd al Muttalib ibn Hashim might have suffered from illnesses, Abu Bakr was the replacement for leading prayer, according to the Sunni tradition of Islam. Al Baghdadi His surname literally means one from Baghdad and denotes he comes from Baghdad city or Baghdad governorate in Iraq. Background Al-Baghdadi is believed to have been born near Samarra, Iraq, in 1971. IAIAM Al-Badri al-Samarai was apparently born as a member of the tribal group known as Al-Bubadri tribe. This tribe includes a number of sub-tribes, including the Radawiya, Hassania, Adnania, and Qararish. In an interview with the Daily Telegraph, contemporaries of al-Baghdadi described him in his youth as being shy, unimpressive, a religious scholar, and a man who eschewed violence for more than a decade, until 2004. He lived in a room attached to a small local mosque in Tabchi, a poor neighborhood on the western fringes of Baghdad, inhabited by both Shia and Sunni Muslims. Ahmed al-Dabash, the leader of the Islamic Army of Iraq, and a contemporary of al-Baghdadi who fought against the Allied invasion in 2003, 
gave a description of al-Baghdadi that matched that of the Tabchi residents. In 2014, American and Iraqi intelligence analysts said that al-Baghdadi has a doctorate for Islamic studies in Quranic studies from Saddam University in Baghdad. According to a biography that circulated on extremist internet forums in July 2013, he obtained a B.A., M.A., and Ph.D. in Islamic studies from the Islamic University of Baghdad. Another report says that he earned a doctorate in education from the University of Baghdad. They, the U.S. and Iraqi governments, know physically who this guy is, but his backstory is just myth, said Patrick Skinner of the Sufan Group, a security consulting firm. HE's managed this secret persona extremely well, and it's enhanced his group's prestige, said Patrick Johnston of the Rand Corporation, adding, Young people are really attracted to that, being mostly unrecognized. Even in his own organization, Baghdadi was known to be nicknamed at some time about 2015, as the Invisible Sheikh, Islamic cleric. Some believe that al-Baghdadi was already an Islamic revolutionary during the rule of Saddam Hussein, but other reports contradict this. He may have been a mosque cleric around the time of the U.S.-led invasion in 2003. After the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, al-Baghdadi helped found the militant group Jamaat Jahl al-Sunwar al-Jamaa, in which he served as head of the Sharia Committee. Al-Baghdadi and his group joined the Mujahideen Shura Council in 2006 in which he served as a member of the MSC's Sharia Committee. Following the renaming of the MSC as the Islamic State of Iraq in 2006, al-Baghdadi became the general supervisor of the ISIS Sharia Committee and a member of the group's Sire Consultative Council. U.S. Internment Al-Baghdadi was arrested by U.S. forces Iraq on 2 February 2004 near Fallujah and detained at the Abu Ghraib and Camp Bukha detention centers under his name Ibrahim Awad Ibrahim al-Badri as a civilian internee until December 2004 when he was recommended for release by a combined review and release board. In December 2004, he was released as a low-level prisoner. A number of newspapers and cable news channels have instead stated that al-Baghdadi was interned from 2005 to 2009. These reports originate from an interview with the former commander of Camp Bukka, Colonel Kenneth King, and are not substantiated by Department of Defense records. Al-Baghdadi was imprisoned at Camp Bukha along with other future leaders of ISIL. As leader of the Islamic State of Iraq The Islamic State of Iraq, also known as Al-Qaeda in Iraq, was the Iraqi division of Al-Qaeda. Al-Baghdadi was announced as leader of the ISI on 16 May 2010. Following the death of his predecessor Abu Omar al-Baghdadi, as leader of the ISI, al-Baghdadi was responsible for masterminding large-scale operations such as the 28 August 2011 suicide bombing at the Umm al qara Mosque in Baghdad, which killed prominent Sunni lawmaker Khalid al-Fadawi. Between March and April 2011, the ISI claimed 23 attacks south of Baghdad, all allegedly carried out under al-Baghdadi's command. Following the death of founder and head of al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, on 2 May 2011, in Abbottabad, Pakistan, al-Baghdadi released a statement praising bin Laden and threatening violent retaliation for his death. On 5 May 2011, al-Baghdadi claimed responsibility for an attack in Hilla, 
south of Baghdad, that killed 24 policemen and wounded 72 others. On 15 August 2011, a wave of ISI suicide attacks beginning in Mosul resulted in 70 deaths. Shortly thereafter, in retaliation for bin Laden's death, the ISI pledged on its website to carry out 100 attacks across Iraq featuring various methods of attack, including raids, suicide attacks, roadside bombs and small arms attacks in all cities and rural areas across the country. On the 22nd of December 2011, a series of coordinated car bombings and IED attacks struck over a dozen neighborhoods across Baghdad, killing at least 63 people and wounding 180. The assault came just days after the U.S. completed its troop withdrawal from the country. On the 26th of December, the ISI released a statement on jihadist internet forums claiming credit for the operation, stating that the targets of the Baghdad attack were accurately surveyed and explored and that the operations were distributed between targeting security headquarters, military patrols, and gatherings of the filthy ones of the al-Dajjal army, referring to the Mahdi army of Shia warlord Muqtada al sadr on 2 December 2012, Iraqi officials claimed that they had captured al-Baghdadi in Baghdad. Following a two-month tracking operation, officials claimed that they had also seized a list containing the names and locations of other al-Qaeda operatives. However, this claim was rejected by the ISI. In an interview with Al Jazeera on 7 December 2012, Iraq's acting interior minister said that the arrested man was not al-Baghdadi, but rather a sectional commander in charge of an area stretching from the northern outskirts of Baghdad to Taji. Expansion into Syria and break with al-Qaeda Al-Baghdadi remained leader of the ISI until its formal expansion into Syria in 2013 when in a statement on 8 April 2013, he announced the formation of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant alternatively translated from the Arabic as the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. When announcing the formation of ISIL, al-Baghdadi stated that the Syrian civil war jihadist faction Jabhat al-Nusra, also known as al-Nusra Front, had been an extension of the ISI in Syria and was now to be merged with ISIL. The leader of Jabhat al-Nusra, Abu Muhammad al-Julani, disputed this merging of the two groups and appealed to al-Qaeda Emir Ayman al-Zawahiri, who issued a statement that ISIL should be abolished, and that al-Baghdadi should confine his group's activities to Iraq. Al-Baghdadi, however, dismissed al-Zawahiri's ruling and took control of a reported 80% of Jabhat al-Nusra's foreign fighters. In January 2014, ISIL expelled Jabhat al-Nusra from the Syrian city of Raqqa, and in the same month clashes between the two in Syria's Deir-e-Zedzor governorate killed hundreds of fighters and displaced tens of thousands of civilians. In February 2014, Al-Qaeda disavowed any relations with ISIL. According to several Western sources, Al-Baghdadi and ISIL have received private financing from citizens in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, and enlisted fighters through recruitment drives in Saudi Arabia in particular. Declaration of a Caliphate on 29 June 2014, ISIL announced the establishment of a worldwide caliphate. Al-Baghdadi was named its caliph, to be known as Caliph Ibrahim, and the Islamic State of Iraq. And the Levant was renamed the Islamic State. There has been much debate, especially across the Muslim world, about the legitimacy of these moves. The declaration of a caliphate has been heavily criticized by Middle Eastern governments, 
other jihadist groups, and Sunni Muslim theologians and historians. Qatar-based TV broadcaster and theologian Yusuf al karadawi stated, The declaration issued by the Islamic State is void under Sharia and has dangerous consequences for the Sunnis in Iraq and for the revolt in Syria, adding that the title of caliph can only be given by the entire Muslim nation, not by a single group. As a caliph, al-Baghdadi is required to hold to each dictate of the Sunnah, whose precedence is set and recorded in the Sahih Hadiths. According to tradition, if a caliph fails to meet any of these obligations at any period, he is legally required to abdicate his position and the community has to appoint a new caliph, theoretically selected from throughout the caliphdom as being the most religiously and spiritually pious individual among them. Due to the widespread rejection of his caliphhood, al-Baghdadi's status as caliph has been compared to that of other caliphs whose caliphship has been questioned. In an audio-taped message, al-Baghdadi announced that ISIL would march on Rome, generally interpreted to mean the West in its quest to establish an Islamic state from the Middle East across Europe. He said that he would conquer both Rome and Spain in this endeavor, and urge Muslims across the world to immigrate to the new Islamic State. On 8 July 2014, ISIL launched its online magazine Dabik. The title appears to have been selected for its eschatological connections with the Islamic version of the End Times, or Malahim. According to a report in October 2014, after suffering serious injuries, al-Baghdadi fled ISIL's capital city Raqqa due to the intense bombing campaign launched by coalition forces, and sought refuge in the Iraqi city of Mosul, the largest city under ISIL control. On 5 November 2014, al-Baghdadi sent a message to al-Qaeda Emir Ayman al-Zawahiri requesting him to swear allegiance to him as caliph, in return for a position in the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. The source of this information was a senior Taliban intelligence officer. Al-Zawahiri did not reply, and instead reassured the Taliban of his loyalty to Mullah Omar. On 7 November 2014, there were unconfirmed reports of al-Baghdadi's death after an airstrike in Mosul, while other reports said that he was only wounded. On 20 January 2015, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that al-Baghdadi had been wounded in an airstrike in al-Qaim, an Iraqi border town held by ISIL, and as a result, withdrew to Syria. On 8 February 2015, after Jordan had conducted 56 airstrikes, which had reportedly killed 7,000 ISIL militants, from 5 the 7th of February, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was said to have fled from Raqqa to Mosul, out of fear for his life. However, after a Peshmerga source informed the US-led coalition that al-Baghdadi was in Mosul, Coalition warplanes continuously bombed the locations where ISIL leaders were known to meet for two hours. On 14 August 2015, it was reported that he allegedly claimed, as his wife, American hostage Kayla Mueller and raped her repeatedly. Mueller was later alleged to have been killed in an airstrike by anti-ISIL forces in February 2015. However, other reports cite that Mueller was murdered by ISIL. Sectarianism and Theocracy Through his forename, al-Baghdadi is rumored to be styling himself after the first caliph, Abu Bakr, who led, rightly guided a Rashidun. According to Sunni tradition, Abu Bakr replaced Muhammad as prayer leader when he was suffering from illnesses. Another feature of the original Rashidun was what some historians dub as the first Sunnist Shist discord during the Battle of Sifan. 
Some publishers have drawn a correlation between those ancient events in modern Salafizing and Caliphizing aims under al-Baghdadi's rule, due to the relatively stationary nature of ISIL control. The elevation of religious clergy who engage in theocratization and the group's scripture-themed legal system, some analysts have declared al-Baghdadi a theocrat and ISIL a theocracy. Other indications of the decline of secularism are the evisceration of secular institutions and its replacement with strict Sharia law and the gradual caliphization and sonification of regions under the group's control. In July 2015, al-Baghdadi was described by a reporter as exhibiting a kinder and gentler side after he banned videos showing slaughter and execution. Communications A number of translations into the English language of verbal communication of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi are available here. First recorded public appearance of July 4, 2014 A video was made during Friday prayers. During the time of Ramadan, the video was uploaded to YouTube during July 5, 2014. With the title ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi makes first public appearance video, having the duration 22 minutes and 3 seconds. The video shows Amir Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi speaking on a pulpit in the Arabic language, with no English subtitles, and has had, of 31 January 2017, over 48,000 views. The video apparently shows Amir al-Baghdadi making a speech at the Great Mosque of al-Nuri in Mosul, northern Iraq. A representative of the Iraqi government denied that the video was of al-Baghdadi, calling it a farce. However, both the BBC and the Associated Press quoted unnamed Iraqi officials as saying that the man in the video was believed to be al-Baghdadi. In the video, al-Baghdadi declared himself the world leader of Muslims and called on Muslims everywhere to support him. 13 November 2014 ISIL released an audio-taped message, claiming it to be in the voice of al-Baghdadi. In the 17-minute recording, released via social media, the speaker says that ISIL fighters would never cease fighting, even if only one soldier remains. The speaker urged supporters of the Islamic State to erupt volcanoes of jihad, across the world. He called for attacks to be mounted in Saudi Arabia describing Saudi leaders as the head of the snake and said that the US-led military campaign in Syria and Iraq was failing. He also said that ISIL would keep on marching and would break the borders of Jordan and Lebanon and free Palestine. Al-Baghdadi also claimed in 2014 that Islamic jihadists would never hesitate to eliminate Israel just because it has the United States support. The 14th of May 2015 on the 14th of May 2015, ISIL released an audio message which it claimed was from al-Baghdadi. In the recording, al-Baghdadi urged Muslims to immigrate to the Islamic State and to join the fight in Iraq and Syria. In the recording, he also condemned the Saudi involvement in Yemen, and claimed that the conflict would lead to the end of the Saudi royal family's rule. He also claimed that Islam was never a religion of peace, that it was the religion of fighting. Assessment was made that this statement proved that al-Baghdadi remained in control or influencing ISIL. The 26th of December 2015 was an audio message of approximately 23 minutes duration, which includes comments with regards to crusaders and Jews, which in the latter of the two, refers to individuals specifically belonging to Judaism. The 2nd of November 2016 was an audio message regarding the need for IS to defend their forces within Mosul, and IS forces should fight the Shia, the Alawites, 
to begin fighting in Saudi Arabia, Turkey and further away, and for individuals to be martyrs in Libya. The communication includes a quote by Salman the Persian, which is, Fighting for Islam, a day and a night, is more meritorious than a month of fasting. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has not released a communication since November 2016. Suspected Location Al-Baghdadi is the top target in the war against ISIL. U.S. intelligence believes he is based in Raqqa and that he keeps a low profile, hiding among the civilian population. ISIL is believed to be headquartered in a series of buildings in Raqqa, but the proximity of civilians makes targeting the headquarters off-limits under U.S. rules of engagement. Photos of a possible public appearance in a Fallujah mosque surfaced in February 2016. Haidu al-Abadi was reported to have stated he knew of the location of al-Baghdadi. Colonel John Dorian, of the Combined Joint Task Force, stated he was aware of al-Baghdadi having chosen to sleep in a suicide vest, as a reaction to the necessities of his current situation. Should it be that he might find himself facing capture? On 18 April 2017, it was reported in the media that al-Baghdadi was arrested in Syria, citing the European Department for Security and Information. Several media outlets reported that al-Baghdadi was apprehended by Syrian and Russian joint forces. However, the Russian Foreign Ministry told Rudor they do not have knowledge of the news and were not aware of his arrest. Asma Fawzi Muhammad al Dulami and ISRAA Rajab Mahal A. Kaisi. Reuters, quoting tribal sources in Iraq, reports Baghdad he has three wives, two Iraqis and one Syrian. The Iraqi Interior Ministry has said that al-Baghdadi has two wives. Asma Fawzi Muhammad al-Dulami and ISRAA Rajab Mahal A. Kaisi. However, in 2016 Fox News reported, based on local media, that Sajar al-Dulami is al-Baghdadi's most powerful wife. Diane Kruger in April 2015, multiple media reports emerged claiming that Baghdadi had married a German teenager on 31 March. On 28 February 2016, Iraqi media reported that she had left ISIL and had fled Iraq along with two other women. Her name was identified as Diane Kruger. A report of Israel National News stated Diane Kruger was married during October 2015 somewhere within the province of Ninawa. Sujidar al-Dulami According to many sources, Sujidar al-Dulami, in other sources, named instead as Saja, is or was al-Baghdadi's wife. It was reported the couple had allegedly met and fallen in love online. Sujidar al-Dulami was arrested in Syria in late 2013 or early 2014, and was released from a Syrian jail in March 2014 as part of a prisoner swap involving 150 women, in exchange for 13 nuns taken captive by al-Qaeda-linked militants. Also released in March were her two sons and her younger brother. The Iraqi Interior Ministry has said there is no wife named Sarja al-Dulami. Al-Dulamus family allegedly all adhere to ISIL's ideology. Her father, Ibrahim Dulami, a so-called ISIL emir in Syria, was reportedly killed in September 2013 during an operation against the Syrian army in Diratia. Her sister, Duaa was allegedly behind a suicide attack that targeted a Kurdish gathering in Erbil. The Iraq Interior Ministry has said that her brother is facing execution in Iraq for a series of bombings in southern Iraq. The Iraq government, however, 
said that al-Dulami is the daughter of an active member of al-Qaeda's affiliate in Syria, al-Nusra Front. In late November 2014, al-Dulami was arrested and held for questioning by Lebanese authorities, along with two sons and a young daughter. They were traveling on false documents. The children were held in a care center while al-Dulami was interrogated. The capture was a joint intelligence operation by Lebanon, Syria and Iraq, with the U.S. assisting Iraq. Al-Dulamis potential intelligence value is unknown. An unnamed intelligence source told the New York Times that during the Iraq War, when the Americans captured a wife of Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq, we got little out of her, and when we sent her back, Zarqawi killed her. As of December 2014, al-Baghdadi's family members were seen by the Lebanese authorities as potential bargaining chips in prisoner exchanges. In the clearest explanation yet of al-Dulamis connection to al-Baghdadi, Lebanese Interior Minister Nohad Maknouk told Lebanon's MTV channel that Dulami is not Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's wife currently. She has been married three times, first to a man from the former Iraqi regime, with whom she had two sons. Other sources identify her first husband as Fala Ishmael Yassim, a member of the Rashidine army, who was killed in a battle with the Iraqi army in 2010. Maknou continued, Six years ago she married Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi for three months, and she had a daughter with him. Now, she is married to a Palestinian and she is pregnant with his child. The minister added, we conducted DNA tests on her and the daughter, which showed she was the mother of the girl, and that the girl is Baghdadi's daughter. Based on DNA from Baghdadi from Iraq, Al Monitor reported a Lebanese security source as saying that Al Dulami had been under scrutiny since early 2014. He said that Jabat Al Nusra had insisted back in March on including her in the swap that ended the kidnapping of the Malulanans. The negotiators said on their behalf that she was very important, and they were ready to cancel the whole deal for her sake. He added, it was later revealed by Abu Malik al-Tali, one of al-Nusra's leaders, that she was Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's wife. On 9 December 2014, al-Dulami and her current Palestinian husband, Kamal Khalaf, were formally arrested after the Lebanese military court issued warrants and filed charges for belonging to a terrorist group, holding contacts with terrorist organizations, and planning to carry out terrorist acts. In December 2015, the Lebanese government exchanged al Dulami and her daughter for Lebanese soldiers being held by al-Qaeda affiliate al-Nusra Front in a prisoner swap deal. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.